We all have things that we obsess over and collect. For me, it's horror movies. To be honest, pretty much anything horror. When I was a kid, I discovered a series called the Criterion Collection, and the very first movie that I ever bought was a DVD of Fritz Lang's 1931 classic, M, starring Peter Lorre, where he plays a serial killer. Well, today, we're gonna to be talking about Peter Lorre and telling his story, visiting his final resting place, which is here in Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Even if you don't know the name Peter Lorre, I guarantee you, you know his face. He's been in so many movies from 1931's M to Arsenic and Old Lace, Alfred Hitchcock's The Man Who Knew Too Much, the Casablanca, The Maltese Falcon. And do you remember back in the 60s when Vincent Price did a couple movies based off of Edgar Allan Poe's tales? Well, he was in those with Vincent Price. In fact, him and Vincent Price we're really good friends. Well, what about him? I don't, I don't think he's quite dead enough yet to bury you him. You don't think he's quite dead enough yet to bury him? <laughs> In fact, Vincent Price and Peter Lorre were such good friends that when Peter Lorre died on March 23rd, 1964, it was Vincent Price who gave the eulogy at Peter Lorre's funeral. For years, Peter Lorre suffered from chronic gallbladder issues, but it was March 23rd, 1964, when he suffered a stroke and died in his home right here in Hollywood, California. He was cremated, and his ashes were interred inside this mausoleum in Hollywood Forever Cemetery, right down here at the end of this corridor. A beautiful little place, right? So quiet. Now there's a little shelf here, as you can see. There's three different pictures of him. See what I mean? He had a very distinctive face, facial features, his eyes. Man, this guy has been in so many things. If you do come here to Hollywood Forever Cemetery to visit Peter Lorre, as well as the countless other celebrities who are buried here, just know that that ledge with the pictures on it, that's not where his ashes are. Just a little bit to the right of it, you'll find a little spot where it says, Peter Lorre, 1904 to 1964. And he is interred here with his wife, Anne-Marie Lorry, who died in 1971. Now, Anne was Peter Lorry's third wife, and together they had his only child, and that's who you see in that picture there. Her name is Catherine. Now, an interesting piece of trivia, if you will, when Catherine got older, she made headlines because do you remember the serial killer, the Hillside Strangler? In Los Angeles, a killer the police are calling the Hillside Strangler has murdered 10 young women and left their bodies on the hillsides along the highways. Today, the police found another, number 11, they think. 
Two young paper boys discovered what appeared to be the latest victim. The body had been dumped 15 feet down an embankment in a residential neighborhood. The victim was a woman, about 20 years old, and the body was nude. Today, the Los Angeles police say they have a suspect, a man in jail in another state. Los Angeles police say they have enough evidence to charge 27-year-old Kenneth Bianchi with 10 of the hillside stranglings. Police focused on Bianchi only after he was arrested last January for the murder of two college students in Washington State. Well, Bianchi testified to picking her up with the intent to kill her, but ultimately let her go when he found out that she was the daughter of actor Peter Lorre. Strange, right? Without a doubt, Peter Lorre has been in some amazing classic movies, Casablanca, The Maltese Falcon. He's even worked with Alfred Hitchcock before Hitchcock became known in the world of horror. Now, he died in 1964, but it wasn't until 1962, 63, and 64 with his work with Vincent Price that he became a legendary name in the world of horror. I mean, that's how I grew to know him, aside from the movie M in 1931. So legendary that he even has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Since we're here inside the mausoleum at Hollywood Forever Cemetery, as well as I haven't had the chance to visit him since we've moved here to California, Rudolf Valentino, his final resting place is in the same mausoleum as Peter Lorre. And it's right here. There's so many flowers. I mean, basically you can smell this corner of the mausoleum from the other side of the mausoleum. Rudolf Valentino, 1895 to 1926. Right? Talk about all the love. Look at all the flowers. Right here in the Valentino corner, there's a wreath with so many different roses. It smells so good. And the ribbon says, Rudolph Valentino, the 95th anniversary. I had no clue. And there's even more roses over here, sitting on the bench and on the sill at the base of the stained glass window. Wow. Even though Rudolph Valentino's final resting place is right here, I do want to save his story for another time because I also want to take you guys to his mansion on a hill known as Falcon's Lair. Now, I'll talk about it more in that video, but his mansion is directly across the canyon from where Sharon Tate and her friends were murdered by the Manson family. It's weird how things here in Los Angeles and Hollywood and the Hollywood Hills are so close to each other. I mean, so much history here, good and bad. Now, some of the flowers here have ribbons that say Valentino on it. As you can see, a little card, Rudolph Valentino forever, 1895, 1926, August 23rd, 2001. Anything on the back? No, nothing on that one at least. Very beautiful. Hey guys, this is Lucian from Hollywood, California. Just ran to Grimm here at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, checking out Peter Lorre's final resting place. Hope you guys have a great Halloween. Wherever I come, I'm in luck. It's coming my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. His daddy stays. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 